grade 10s, welcome to the next lesson in the series on quantitative aspects of chemical change. In a previous lesson, we learned how to find the relative molecular mass of a substance. In this lesson, we will look at how to find the number of particles in a sample of a substance. The mole is the quantity of a substance that contains the same amount of particles as there are carbon atoms in 12 grams of carbon. These particles can be atoms or molecules or ions or even formula units. Keke will tell us more about this amount of particles now. Yes, you heard right. Today we actually know how many individual atoms there are in one mole. But before we get to that, there's a concept I want you to get clear in your minds first. Imagine you're out shopping. You wouldn't ever ask for 300 grams of medium eggs, now would you? Of course not. You ask for eggs by number. In other words, you would ask for six medium eggs or half a dozen medium eggs. But whether you ask for six medium eggs, half a dozen medium eggs, or 300 grams of medium eggs, you would get the same thing. Six eggs. Each of the statements, six medium eggs, half a dozen medium eggs, and 300 grams of medium eggs, means the same thing although they sound different. Now, in chemistry, we have a similar situation. Let me explain this more by calculating the relative molecular mass of sugar. Sugar has a chemical formula of C12H22O11. Why don't you try to calculate the relative molecular mass on your own? To do this, we use the same method as when we need to find the relative molecular mass of a substance. Following the same method as before, we substitute the relative atomic masses of the different elements into the formula and find that the relative molecular mass of sugar is 342. This means that one molecule of sugar will have a mass of 342 when compared with one twelfth of the mass of one carbon-12 atom. But how many molecules of sugar are in one mole of sugar? Keke asked the same question. Could I tell you exactly how many molecules of sugar there are in the bowl? Did I just hear you say impossible, you can't count molecules? Well, that may have well been true before 1900, but in 1912, a German scientist called Max von Lau started using X-rays to investigate the structure of crystals. By using X-ray crystallography, it is now possible to accurately calculate the number of atoms in the relative atomic mass of a substance. The number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon is about 600,000 million billion atoms. Now, that's a lot of atoms. Think of it this way. Imagine a surface area that's a little bit bigger than the Northern Cape, covered with grains of sand up to the height of a 10-story building. This would be about one mole of sand. Yet, that's the number of atoms squashed into this 12-gram sample of carbon. This huge number can be written in scientific notation as 6 times 10 to the 23 and is called Avogadro's constant. As with most numbers in science, it can also be indicated with the symbol Na. Keke has showed us how this value can be determined experimentally. She has also used a rounded off value. This is a more accurate calculation of Avogadro's number. It can be written in scientific notation as 6,02 times 10 to the power of 23. We use the symbol capital N subscript A to represent Avogadro's number. Armidio Avogadro did not figure out this number. It was decades later when people calculated how many atoms or molecules there are in a mole. They honored Avogadro by naming the number after him. Fortunately, this number is given to us on data sheets in exams and tests. This means that we don't have to know it off by heart, we just need to know how to use it. Some chemists are so excited about this number that every year they organize a mole day. This day is on the 23rd of October every year. To understand the size of this number, we can compare it to a known measure. If you have a dozen eggs, you will have 12 eggs. If you have a mole of eggs, you will have 6,02 times 10 to the power of 23 eggs. Let's explore this a bit more. If 10 million hens laid an egg every second, it would take them 2 billion years to lay Avogadro's number of eggs. 
That is a lot of eggs. Avogadro's constant, or number, brings us back to the definition of the mole. Remember, the mole is the quantity of a substance that contains the same amount of particles as there are carbon atoms in 12 grams of carbon. From this definition, we find that one mole of carbon will have a mass of 12 grams, which correlates with the relative atomic mass of carbon on the periodic table. What is the molar mass then? The definition of molar mass is the mass of one mole of a chemical substance. The unit for molar mass is grams per mole, and this is abbreviated as g dot mole to the power of negative one. The mass of one mole of any element or compound expressed in grams, that is the molar mass, is numerically equal to the relative molecular mass of that element of compound. However, don't confuse the two things. Relative molecular mass is the mass of one molecule, so it is an extremely small mass. Molar mass is the mass of one mole of molecules, which is a huge number of molecules. We can summarize in this table. The symbol for the relative molecular mass is capital M subscript R. And the symbol for molar mass is capital letter M. The relative molecular mass has no unit. And the unit for molar mass is gram per mole. Let's use an example. We can calculate the relative molecular mass of ammonia. We start by writing the symbol for relative molecular mass and then in brackets the formula for ammonia. The next step is to find the relative atomic mass of nitrogen and hydrogen on the periodic table and substitute these values. Nitrogen is 14 and hydrogen is 1, giving us a relative atomic mass of 17. To find the molar mass of ammonia, we make only two changes to the calculation. The M subscript R changes to only capital M and the answer gets a unit of gram per mole. One last thing to remember, although the number of particles in a mole is the same, irrespective of what substance we have, the mass is not the same. Think of a dozen apples and a dozen peas. Although they are the same quantity, they definitely do not have the same mass. The same happens if we compare one mole of sugar, one mole of sodium chloride, one mole of carbon, and one mole of copper. Here, we have one mole of sugar molecules with a mass of 342 grams. One mole of sodium chloride ions with a mass of 58,5 grams. One mole of carbon atoms with a mass of 12 grams and one mole of copper atoms with a mass of 63,5 grams. The masses of the different chemicals are not the same, but they all contain the same number of elementary particles, namely 6,02 times 10 to the power of 23. This brings us at the end of today's lesson. In the next lesson, we will look at the relationship between mass, number of moles, and molar mass. Don't forget to check the series guide and the website for more resources. Goodbye.